The Trans X jump seat is a seat lever actuated dropper post. What that means is yes, you do have to momentarily reach towards your crotch to actuate it. But despite that slightly awkward maneuver, this has become one of my favorite bike accessories of 2022. It's by no means new and there are many products like it. I do think this is kind of the modern spiritual successor to the height right. Still pretty dang cool. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel, we're all about the non-competitive side of cycling, riding party pace. And if you enjoy content like this, please consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon or buying some stickers and patches because I am just by the humble sticker salesman. Full disclosure, TransX did send this seat post to me for the review. The seat post comes in multiple diameters. This is 27.2 and I think it is the most uh, versatile. It'll fit on old school mountain bikes. It'll fit on modern gravel bikes, your townie, your commuter. You, you could also shim it so it works on larger diameter seat posts. So if you're gonna get one, I would say the 27.2 is the way to go. Installation is stupid easy. You basically put it in your seat post and then attach your saddle and that's it. That's part of the joy of a seat actuated dropper like this. You don't have to worry about internal routing, external routing, cables. If you want to put this on a bike with 22.2 uh, diameter mountain bike bars, not an issue. You can also then move it to your gravel bike with 23.8 diameter bars and you don't have to worry about it because there's nothing, there's literally nothing to put on the handlebars. Just put this on your bike and ride. I've been using this dropper on some review bikes as well as personal bikes and it's pretty much no fuss to it. What I love about it is you never have to worry about cable tension or things getting kinked. If you've ever been on a ride and you're dropper got stuck or it's slowly sliding down because there's a kink in the cable somewhere and you can't figure out where it is exactly. Don't have to worry about it with this seat post. I will say, although I love it and it's perfect for the terrain we have out here, it's not for everybody. In the places that we ride, it's usually one really long climb followed by some kind of peak or summit and then continuous descending. And in that terrain, it's just about perfect because you only really have to think about it that one time once you're at the peak and then once you're at the bottom of the descent, you raise it back up. If however, you are riding super techie terrain that's undulating, going up and down super steep and need to manipulate your dropper multiple times, then, then this probably isn't for you. Beyond trails, however, I've become a big believer in the dropper. They're super useful for gravel rides or road rides. It's amazing what a few centimeters will do in terms of having that feeling of stability. It's also great for utilitarian cycling. Right now, Laura and I are sharing my polyvalent, our, which is our grocery getter, and she has longer legs than I. So instead of constantly undoing the binder bolt, risking stripping it out, you just kind of pop the lever up, sets, she sets it to her saddle height. And when I get on the bike, I push the lever and set it to mine. I know what you're thinking, Russ, that sounds awesome. What are the downsides? There are a few. Uh, the first one is weight. It is, it is not the lightest seat post. I think it weighs in over 600 grams for the 27.2. That doesn't bother me, but if you're a weight weenie, you know who you are. You're, you've already typed in the comments and then not for you. Probably one of the bigger issues is the travel is a little bit limited because of its stack height. This is fairly uh, tall right here as well as this piece, and this cuts into your effective travel. It's not a big deal if you put it on the bike with a real sloping top tube, but for most gravel bikes where, where the top tube is horizontal, you, you really want every centimeter you can get. So for that reason, putting this on a cross or road-inspired gravel bike, where there isn't a sloping top tube, you're not getting as much travel as you would want. Another thing that I wish this dropper did, which a few TransX droppers actually do, is to be able to adjust the amount of travel. They have one dropper post that came with the Kona ULTD, where you could unscrew this cap, uh, move the shim around, and, and adjust the effective travel. That would be awesome for something like this, where you would find yourself moving it from bike to bike to bike, you could set it tall for when it's on a bike with more mountain bike geometry or shorten the travel if you're putting it on a gravel bike. And lastly, if we can just dream big here, I'd love to see this with the shorter stack, the adjustable travel, as well as some built-in suspension. So basically, if you took the PNW Coast and this dropper and they had a baby, it would be magical. 
I know a dropper post isn't for everybody. I was kind of like, what's the point a couple years ago? But the more I've used them, I think I would actually take a dropper post eight out of 10 times over a suspension seat post. They're just really useful. It's amazing how much more solid you feel even on a road ride or a gravel road ride. You don't have to be shredding the gnar to appreciate a dropper. But that's what I think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Is this too weird? Is this moving backwards because you don't have the little lever thing? Or is this just genius?